Tribune, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, gun and ammo found on the pillow, sent a man in custody. One man is in custody after the police seized an illegal gun and ammunition during an operation in Faith Spen, Monique in St. Anne on Sunday. Reports from the Monique police saw that about 11.50 a.m., Lomen in the area, when a premises that was occupied by a man was searched. During the search, one 9mm Browning pistol with a magazine containing eight rounds of ammunition was found wrapped in a bag that was under a pillow inside the house. It was subsequently taken into custody. Its identity has been withheld pending further investigation. Chop victim gunned down attacker as reprisal. Police in St. James are now searching for a chop victim who returned minutes later and shot his attacker to death. The tragic incident took place at Queen's Drive in Montego Bay yesterday. Police have identified the dead man as 45-year-old David Roy from the resort city. Reports received are that about 3.15 p.m., Roy and a man had a dispute which turned physical. Police said during the altercation, Roy used a machete to inflict a wound on the man. The man reportedly left and later returned. A gun was then used to shoot Roy multiple times. The suspect allegedly made good his escape in a waiting motor car. The police were alerted and the now deceased man was transported to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Efforts to locate the suspect have so far been unsuccessful, the police said. Man reportedly fled hometown gone down in Bog Walk. A St. Catherine man, who police believe had fled his home in Gordon Penn, was tracked down by an unknown assailant and murdered in Bog Walk on Monday morning. The deceased has been identified as Ricardo Brady Edwards from Gordon Penn in Spanish Town. He was shot dead by a gunman in an area known as Casha Walk in West Prospect, Bog Walk. Police reports indicate that about 11 a.m., Edwards went to a corner shop in the community when he was pounced upon by a man who opened gunfire at him. The police say Edwards went into a dwelling adjoining the shop and was pursued by his attacker who continued firing before fleeing on foot in the area. Residents summoned the authorities who found the deceased with several gunshot wounds partially slung over the rim of a blue barrel. Edwards, the police say, fled Gordon Penn following a disagreement he had with men from the community. The police believe his new location was later discovered and he was killed. Money Heist, the president of the Jamaica Society for Industrial Security, JSIS, believes the amount of planning could have prevented a bloody case of deja vu in which criminals all gone the Berlin Korea team on Sunday, living for injured as they made off with a sum believed to be in the region of $23 million. The incident unfolded about 12.40 p.m. as the crew was in the process of servicing an ATM in Portmore, St. Catherine, at the Two Cooks on Penn branch. The attack took place less than 200 meters from where two beryllium guards were shot while performing a similar function three weeks ago. One guard died in that encounter as the criminals made off with an estimated $10 million. It is clear that the attack was carried out by vicious and brutal men with a tactical level of precision. They used the same methodology as the previous attack. Their objectives were clear and they were prepared, JC's president, Lieutenant Commander George Overton said, while expressing sympathy for the wounded team members. Overton, a director of the Guardsman Group of Companies, within which Beryllium Falls, noted that Sunday's attack was done in a manner that limited reaction from the guards. We'll have to step up or mitigate against this increased violence in our operation that put our men at risk, Overton admitted. However, adding the part of the strategy is to establish a wider field of operation to protect the crew and minimize risk to members of the public while the Korea team performs their duties. On Sunday, a woman and a young child nearly missed being caught in the middle of a firefight as they drove up to the ATM moments before a hail of bullets. The two had exited the vehicle and were inside the ATM when the drama unfolded. Their car was peppered with bullets as the gunmen engaged the security guards with high-powered weapons and handguns. The woman was still shaken up to speak to the media. Up to late last evening, the police and members of the Jamaica Defense Force were combing a white ear in the Lake Spen area where the men abandoned the vehicles in which they fled the scene of the attack. This latest incident has drawn a sharp reaction from Portmore businessman Fenley Douglas, who is also the treasurer for the Portmore Pines Plaza Strata 851, where the first shooting took place. Douglas, who is also the counsel for the Waterford Division, said that the government needs to review the security regulations with an emphasis on training and operational strategy for private firms. It is clear that the security companies are allowed to operate in the public space transporting large sums of money 
without a clear strategy to protect themselves and members of the public who have to conduct financial transactions in these spaces, Douglas said. He added that the revision must look at a standard operating procedure for security officers who are custodians of large sums of money with an emphasis on how to mitigate the risk involved in the interests of public safety. There must be a prescribed number of security personnel involved in these assignments. Also, the level of training afforded to them, based on the imminent danger they will face, and the kind of vehicle that they use to transport money, must be a part of the review, Douglas noted. Following the attack a few weeks ago, Overtenant said that while couriers would love to invest in more high-end armored vehicles, this would be a very costly endeavor and their clients may not be able to afford such a service. In our business, everybody has to pay for the service. Our responsibility is to mitigate the risk while being able to deliver affordable costs to the marketplace, he said. We'd love to buy the Bushmasters, like what the army has to deliver money, but we'll be able to pay for that service. Not even the Bank of Jamaica will be able to pay, argued Overton. Magaman gets more time to explain his action. The convicted member of the Andre Blackman brand led one down faction of the Klansman gang, Ted Prince, who stunned the Home Circuit Court when he urinated inside a courtroom there last month, has received another week to explain his lewd actions. This is after Chief Justice Brian Sykes was unavailable on Thursday to hear why Prince should not be charged with contempt of court relative to the incident. Prince appeared in court as instructed by Sykes with his attorney, Lyndon Wellesley. The convicted gangster was demanded in custody until Thursday, March 23. On Tuesday, February 28, the 28-year-old gangster was seen urinating in a corner of courtroom 2 at the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston, where the then 27 accused persons had to be accommodated in two courtrooms for the massive gang trial. Prince had reportedly been in the process of requesting a bathroom break, but before an officer of the court could relay the request to Sykes, the gangster made his way to the back of the courtroom and relieved himself right there. The action stunned the two courtrooms and resulted in Sykes briefly adjourning the proceedings. Sykes did not address the matter until the final day of the trial when he ordered Prince to prepare to explain his actions. Prince, otherwise called Magaman, was among 15 people, including Andre Bryan, St. Thomas Pastor Stephanie Moma Christie, and ex soldier Jermaine Robinson, who were convicted of being members of a criminal organization. Prince and the gang leader were also convicted of facilitating the murder of an unknown man outside Phil's address in Spanish Town, St. Catherine in 2018. Prince and the other 14 convicts are to return to court on July 3 when their sentencing hearings relative to the gang-related convictions are scheduled to begin. High school students engage in road safety program. The Road Safety Unit RSU and the Island Traffic Authority ITA are actively engaging high school students for the development of defensive driving skills and the knowledge of the road code. This initiative, dubbed the Road Safety Education in Schools program, is one of several measures being used to make the roads safer for both motorists and pedestrians. Director of the RSU, Deidre Hudson Sinclair, said the students who participate in the program get a full understanding of the road code and how to drive safely, as the Ministry of Transport and Mining and its agencies are very concerned with many of the unsafe practices of some male drivers between 19 and 25 years of age. A lot of young men are at risk, so we recognize the importance of starting early, she said, adding that schools wishing to be on the program can contact the agencies at data at mtw.gov.jm and rsu at mtw.gov.jm. Hudson Sinclair said they want the students to learn the code, do the test, and get involved in the program. It is the aim of the RSU and the ITA to have a change in the culture, a positive driving culture, and is part of a larger mechanism to get a new generation of drivers having critical skills, helping to avoid crashes, and recognizing that we have to drive for ourselves and the other persons on the road, she added. As part of the program, the agencies, with support from the United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF, have developed the Jamaica Adolescent Learner Driver Curriculum, which seeks to impart safe driving among the young population and to decrease the level of risk-taking that is popular among them, which has accounted for many fatalities on the roads. Under the new Road Traffic Act, individuals seeking to obtain a provisional driver's license, learner's permit, must take a road code test before it is granted, and within six months, they must successfully complete another test to obtain the driver's license. Hudson Sinclair said the crashes on the roads can be avoided as speed is a major factor and drivers must consider the lives of others while they are in control of the vehicles. Hudson Sinclair said the crashes on the roads can be avoided 
as speed is a major factor, and drivers must consider the lives of others while they are in control of the vehicles. She has also called on pedal cyclists and pedestrians to be more visible at night, and people should exercise more care when they are crossing the roads. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.